All right, family, we are here live again. And uh, I am ready and willing. All right, how you? How many of you guys are willing and willing today? All right, so um, first things first. We're going to be talking about defining the story through arcs and absolutes today. Before we begin, I want to hear your comments about what you think so far about the class and also um, things that you might be falling falling behind on. Now, I will be checking the work of my patrons um, and I will be helping them, especially on the log line. I might even help by redefining their log line a little bit in order to get it better. But uh, this weekend is the first weekend that's coming up for our course. There's so many more ahead of us and I just want to hear your opinions on what we've done so far. So uh, let me know in the comments section. Oh, well, um, just to let you know about the microphone thing. Um, I think there was a setting that will automatically turn off the microphone after 30 minutes. I didn't know about it, though, so I finally like disabled the setting. So I should be fine. Even if it turns off, I will be able to uh, turn it back on. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> You know, let's see what happens with that. Yeah, it should work just fine. You know, uh, I've definitely, uh, you know, uh, I looked it up, made sure that the settings were correct this time around. <laughs> Ah, so a couple of people had a hard time doing the log lines. I can see how that could be a problem, especially if you've never worked on log lines before for your stories, right? <laughs> like, it could really be kind of a daunting task to put everything in two sentences and get it out there. So uh, I am proud of you. A lot of you made some really, really, really good log lines. A lot of you are close, like very close. So uh, I'm definitely excited to see what you're going to be doing further from that. Your summaries. Now, I, I said in um, Discord, because a lot of you guys work in Discord with me, um, I said not to share your summaries in Discord. The reason for that is because your summary is basically your entire story. I don't want you giving all your story away in a public forum because that could be detrimental to, your, um, to the safety of it. So I definitely decided not to do that. Uh, but... Um, this time around, we're going to be uh, we're going to be working a lot harder. And uh, this weekend, you got a lot of work to do because this is where you're going to be defining your entire story from front to back. Okay. Now, if you like what's happened so far, please hit that like button under the video so I know that you are in it. You know, and also uh, if you noticed on the left side. In our comment section under the video, you see the homework assignment for the next class. Now, uh, attendance is down a bit today, probably because I didn't send an email out. I kind of forgot to send emails out for this class, so uh, maybe people didn't um, get the heads up that it's coming up. But it should pick back up uh, as the class continues. Uh, let's get this started right now with uh, the course. Defining the story, arcs and absolutes. By the way, I'm going to stop the class halfway through, give you a little commercial from me, my books and stuff like that, you know, random solicitation. It's fun, though, right? Might as well do something while I'm here. <laughs> so let's begin. Ah, there are two stories in every book, okay? So no matter what story you're writing, right, no matter what story you're writing at all, there are two stories in your book uh, the a story and the B story all right so let's go over what the a story is first and then let's go over what the B story is so the a story is a clear goal of a story so this is like the overall goal of the story right the external motivations the genre you know the mandatory tasks necessary to succeed 
you know the the ends the the a story tends to be an organization or challenge you know like like uh for instance the empire in star wars you know defeating the empire in star wars is the a story right that's the a story that's the main story that that uh is basically what everybody remembers they see it bam 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 you know and they're like okay i totally understand this fight between the empire and the republic but the b story is the internal the personal story of the main character all right that's the personal story of the main character it's usually the motivations of the main character what they need right maybe he or she needs something that they're not necessarily expressing in their story uh we also have a love interest right maybe a secret desire right maybe they want to maybe they don't want to fight anymore but they're a warrior so they have to fight you know um you know these kind of internal struggles is what makes a story good all right because if it's just take out the bad guys you know stories get really um boring all right a lot of comic books have this issue where they they're too good at what they do there's no internal dialogue and as a result you know it, it it's kind of boring when you turn it into a film it's good for comic books cuz you know kids buy comic books adults too but mostly kids and they're not necessarily thinking that hard but when you're an adult and you're reading something you need a good b story in order to get um immersed into it you know Oh, and by the way, the B story is usually represented by an actual character, all right? So it's a, a person, like maybe a male or a female. That's your B story. That's the person who uh, who needs to be in, the, in, in there, all right? So, uh, when we look at things, right, we want to say examples, right? I love giving examples, right? Because um, when you read Save the Cat, you're learning it from somebody who's kind of unpersonal to you, right? So they don't really know how you think and how you talk and, you know, is working with you that deeply. But I am, you know, I'm working with you and I want you to understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the A story. So here's a few examples, good examples and bad examples. And this will actually help you significantly when it comes to writing your log line, all right? So, oh, I wanna write the log line for my story. How should I do that? Well, this is actually some of the things you need to be implementing into your log line. So good examples would be like uh, finding water and freedom in Mad Max. So in Mad Max, basically, uh, you know, everybody's basically oppressed by someone, right? And water is extremely scarce. So that's your A story. If they don't get these two things, they die. Simple as that, right? They die. If they don't get these two things, they die. That is the A story. It's high stakes. It has to be a high stakes to your A story, okay? It can't be like, oh, they have to solve a mystery. And if they don't, everything's gonna be all right they just didn't solve it no if they don't hundreds of kids will end up dying now you have a plot all right that's a good a story how about another one uh saving the people from terrorists in a building die hard right if he doesn't if he doesn't stop them they're gonna blow up the whole building anyway and get away with the money so you see the problem right there it's like he has to stop them and as a matter of fact at the, at the beginning of the movie when he's caught in there and he's taking out a couple of terrorists they don't really say what the stakes are right as far as we know these guys are trying to steal money but that's it but halfway through the movie the stakes get raised dramatically when we find out that they strapped a whole bunch of explosive in the building and they have no intentions of ever turning in all those people who are who are, who are covered now it's a uh, either stop them or everyone dies scenario before it was just stop them hopefully right but it's not that serious so long as they don't if they everybody cooperates it'll be fine now what's a really high stakes all right high stakes when it comes to the a story how about also uh this one stop a war between the surface and the sea right if aquaman is unsuccessful in getting the trident 
then basically a war between the surface and the sea will happen and billions of people will die. All right. Super big stakes. Got to have huge giant stakes for uh, the A story. All right. <laughs> and then here's some bad examples. Right. So bad examples would be the rich citizens in Elysium. Now, Elysium's a nice story. I like I like Elysium, the movie. It was pretty good. Right. But uh, if you if you didn't explain why the rich people uh, uh like uh, really affecting society and how if you don't stop the rich people, something catastrophic will happen. If you don't have high stakes like that, then basically it's a bad premise to the whole the whole story. You don't know why. Why is it so bad that these rich people exist? You have to explain that when you're telling your story. The 12 districts in the Hunger Games. Imagine if the Hunger Games never said anything about entire districts being wiped out for not listening or uh people who re um refused to fight lost their entire families imagine if it was just this 12 districts that have to fight and then they go fight and that was the whole that was the whole a story right <laughs> 12 districts have to fight to survive you know that's kind of boring you know, there's nothing there. There's nothing that's real high stakes because everybody has to participate in the same exact fashion. All right. How about this one from The Hobbit? Five armies battle for a treasure. Imagine if that was the whole premise <laughs> of The Hobbit. Five armies have to battle for a treasure. You know, I could explain it that way, but it'd be a horrible explanation. Probably one of the horriblest uh, summaries and log lines you ever heard in your life. All right. So... <laughs> So you got to make sure that the A story has high stakes, right? And, you know, it's not just, oh, big bad guys, look out for them. It's why it's significant to go against them and what's at stake if you do not succeed. All right. Then we have the B stories. B stories would be Obi-Wan training Luke and telling him secrets about his past right so obi-wan is a good b story character because he comes in a little bit later in the story he doesn't come in right away he comes in about the second act right and he's basically training luke on how to think how to talk how to basically use his abilities abilities he thought he never had right um, maybe revealing a little bit about his past, but not telling him all the answers. A good B story character should never tell the main character all the answers. The main character has to find those answers for themselves. All right. The B the B character is just there as a catalyst to help them grow. You know, and uh, that's why Obi Wan is such a great one. That's why people still love Obi Wan, and that's why he was damn near the main character for three damn movies after the series was over because they just love the character himself, Obi Wan Kenobi. You know, then we have the hairstylist from Legally Blonde. She's not a lawyer. She has no intentions of being a lawyer. She's the exact opposite of what the A story is about. The A story is about becoming a lawyer to prove everyone to prove to everyone that you can do it yourself. That you can be this thing just not because you're stereotyped, but that anyone could achieve what they want if they had enough grit. Right? That's not her role. Her role is to say, hey, don't lose yourself in this pursuit to become a lawyer. Be who you are. You know, enjoy the fact that you're this fashion diva or whatever. Just have fun with it. Right. And it keeps her grounded in the story so that later on when she succeeds, she doesn't become this hardcore elitist. You understand? That's another great character. And then Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass is not necessarily a. Uh, well, he is a B character, 100%, right? He's a special B character, though, because in the if you if you watched Unbreakable, right? If you watched the movie Unbreakable, you understand that basically he was not the bad guy in the film, as far as antagonist is concerned, right? Antagonist is the antagonist of the story was actually the main character, you know, Bruce Willis. He was he he was the basically the only reason why he wasn't succeeding. Everything he ever did was against himself. You know, he he suppressed himself. He he was doing horrible things to his family and stuff because he was constantly miserable. And the person who was helping him was the best B character I can even think of, Mr. Glass. You know, Mr. Glass was holding it down. 
And then we find out later on that Mr. Glass was orchestrating everything and stuff like that. But you got to understand, B, B characters push the story forward, help the main character grow. And they might not be there at the very end of the story. They might even die off or whatever. But the whole point is the actions of the main character should reflect a great B story character's you know, influence. Whether if it's a love interest, whether it's a mentor, whatever. It could even be a villain. It doesn't matter. If that person helps them grow or influence, then that's what's up. Another example is um, in... Episode five of Star Wars, you'll see uh, you'll see Vader. Vader is actually the B character in, in in Episode five because you you learn a lot about Vader. You learn a lot about Luke and their interactions with each other. All these things are molding the the person that Luke is going to be. Right, a lot of interactions with his father, a lot of interactions with the memories and what who Anakin used to be and everything else. This story is extremely interesting when you look at the B, the B story of Episode 5. You should really watch that again to go and check it out for yourself. Okay, so here's some bad examples of, of, B, uh, of, of B story characters, right? So you say sidekicks to have no value, right? If it's a sidekick just to have a sidekick, like, hey, I just need a sidekick for the heck of it, right? That's not a good B story um, character at all. And as a result, it might drag down the entire film. You might hate the B character. Like, uh, why is this person even here? You know, B characters need to be cool. And they sometimes need to even be even cooler than the main character. Right? Because they're not going to be around forever. We got to get rid of the B characters eventually. Right? They can't be the, the, the star of the show. You know, Sasuke can't be around forever being cool. Eventually, he got to fall. <laughs> And then love interests doesn't play a critical role in the actions of the A story. So there's a lot of movies that we've seen, a lot of books that we've read, where the love the love interest has absolutely nothing to do with the success or failure of the main character. Sometimes just something that happens in the side. It's not really there. Those things don't even need to be added to the story. All right, all you're doing is distracting from the main story because now people are trying to figure out whether it's going to be an asset or not. You know, and, you know, I personally believe if it doesn't have anything to do with the main story arc in any, like, influential way, best just avoid it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so let's see. Let's go to the next part. Uh, before we get here, all right, I'm going to take a break for a second, and I'm going to talk to you guys about the... Uh, uh, a story and B story. Please tell me your opinion on what I just said about the A stories and the B stories. Let me know if anybody's confused and I'll try to answer some of these questions for you right now. Uh, so Orlandis Hardy says, so, an, so a good B story character would be a love interest, childhood friend, slow, slow, slowly changing the MC's view of the world. Absolutely. That would be a great one, right? So that would be a great character. If the character is literally changing the way the main character perceives the world and perhaps is the reason why they succeed or fail at the end, that is a great B story character, okay? Well, Specs Vision, um, these are good um, B story characters right here on the good example side. On the A stories, right, you see these ones, right? Uh, there's no good A story characters because A stories tend to be the challenge or the the organizations that's, that's the opposition of the main character. So A stories are not characters. They're more organizations, actions, challenges, stuff like that. B stories tend to be exemplified by a character. Usually it's like one or two characters. Uh, a good example would be um, in the Hunger Games. You see uh, PETA, right? PETA, the guy who does the bread, who's always talking about how we should be good people and we shouldn't play the, the, the people's game or whatever, right? PETA is a B story character. He basically keeps Katniss from being a hardcore killer lady, right? 
cat just becomes nicer and more open to kindness because of PETA. Okay, so that's another great B story character. Uh, well, Simone Green says, my main character gets help tips from someone going through the same health issues and gets better. Is he a good B story? Well, I don't know what the stakes are. Really, it really depends on um, the, the dynamic between the main character and the ultimate challenge, right? There's a challenge on one side and there's your main character on the other. If your B character helps your main character get to defeat the challenge when without that B character they wouldn't be able to defeat that challenge then that's a good B character but as you stated right there I have no, um, I can't really tell if it's a good B character or not let's see So if a B story character is secretly the one who makes the master plan go in motion, what would make him a good B character? Well, the only way that that scenario, Edwin, works is if the B character is somebody nobody knows is the villain, right? Or or the master, right? Sometimes, so what you're saying is they're the mastermind of this entire thing. If that's the case... No one can know that, all right? You have to do everything in your power to make sure no one knows that they're the one who basically um, did everything, all right? Because if they did, and we know that already, then we change our perspective of that character. kind of spoils the story for us. So we have to hide the fact that that person's the person who basically did everything. Uh, All Might. Is All Might a B here a B character? Absolutely. All Might is a B character. Um, he is not the main character of My Hero Academia. He is there to mentor people. He's there to change people. And, and whenever he's about to go and do something to save them, everybody tells him, don't do that. They need to learn on their own. He's constantly stopped by the leadership of um, My Hero Academia. Right. They're always stopping him from interfering because they want the kids to grow. So he is a great example of a B character. He's somebody who's supposed to be the star, but's constantly holding himself back because he wants the others to become great themselves without him basically forcing them to be great. Yes, uh, Miles Davis has a great um, statement that's actually a good example. It says, so in the A story, the stakes should be high. The stakes should be catastrophically high, no matter what story you're doing, even if it's a stupid love story, okay? Even if it's just a very practical, small love story between two neighbors, right? The stakes have to be huge, all right? We're talking about stuff like... Uh, a good example would be um, there's something about Mary. It's a love story. There's something about Mary. But everybody's in love with Mary. And Mary, because Mary's always stalked and always, what's it called? She turns off to everybody. And this guy who genuinely loves Mary, it's his only opportunity to ever, ever, ever let her know about his true love for her. And he's willing to go travel hundreds of miles, go through hell and high water to go and get his girl just so he can say to her he loves her. He didn't even know if he'll ever be able to get with her. He just wants to say he loves her, finally get it out of his system once and for all. And you, it, it literally is the worst experience in the world that he has to go through, and yet he still pulls it off. See how high the stakes are for such a simple and normal like like story? It's just a love story about somebody who's just infatuated with someone else. That's all it is. But the stakes are out of this world high, and that's why we love the story.
Okay, so Guts Matterson has a question, and it's a pretty good one. Why is it that the A story you're describing plot, while in the B story you're describing character? Those two are important, but they are separate. He said, well, the, bo the bottom line is this. The B story is personal, all right? This is a personal thing. This is not something that external forces can change, all right? So when we're talking about like... Uh, like, oh man, I really wanna wanna find my sister and, and 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 you know get her murderer. That's more of I need to get revenge or I need to find forgiveness. I need to find peace in my heart. That's a B story, right? And B stories are usually given to somebody from other people, right? Another person comes in that softens their heart, or another person comes in who gets them to get real raged up or take vengeance for someone some some person has to help in that story however the a story is someone either kidnapped or killed the sister and you know messed up his entire life and now he finally knows who it is now he's trying to take him out you understand that's the a story there are high stakes to it if we don't catch him then his sister's killer goes free right so he has to take matters on his own hands that's the a story that's the whole plot of the entire story but the b story is his own personal needs whether it's vengeance or it's forgiveness somebody else most likely a person is going to help him with that it's not going to be the task it's not going to be the organizations he's around it's going to be an actual person most of the time It depends. Now, um, DeAndre Mosley asks, can, a can an antagonist who stops the main character from, c character from completing the A story quest as a part of a separate agenda, does that make for a good B story? Um, it could. It really depends on the relationship between the antagonist and the main character. All right? It, re it really does. Because, for instance, when Sasuke stops naruto we understand clearly that's an amazing b story there's a crazy crazy relationship going on with them naruto's only goal in life is to get acceptance right acceptance from everybody the only person who actually accepts him is sasuke but sasuke hates him because he's so good at what he does you understand so it's like <laughs> so the only person who he's ever successfully you know, got his his internal goal from was from Sasuke, and Sasuke is the only, <laughs> the only one who's truly opposing him, right? Everybody else kind of ignores him, doesn't get in his way, but Sasuke is literally trying to stop him at every turn. You know, do better than him at every turn. So it's just a funny it's it's a funny scenario. So though, so that's the scenario that. Um, the antagonist scenario in which an antagonist can be an amazing B story, right? A rival, somebody who's a constant rival to the main character. You know, it's not vicious. He's not trying to kill him, but he's definitely trying to stop him from succeeding. You know, so never know. All right, so I am moving forward. Uh, before I do, let's go and watch this video. So a lot, um, I think a lot of you don't actually know Manuel Godoy. You know me. You don't really know me yet. So uh, I am an author. I uh, I do write a lot of books. Uh, my best one, Black Sands. You know, it has an amazing book uh, for it called Black Sands: Seven Kingdoms, the Ultimate Edition. It has three comic books in it, and I wanted to show you um, one thing from that before we begin so let's go in here let's go bring my screen up and let's just show you this real quick
pretty dope, right? <laughs> yep, and, uh, you know, I've been making that stuff right there. Long, long story. I always write stuff down exactly how I would if I was reading Save the Cat, you know? I have my entire beat sheet for my entire series. You know, when you're making comic books, and this is very important, when you're making comic books, you have to do a beat sheet for your entire season. However, you also have to make sure that every particular issue has its own beginning and end that's appropriate. You know what I'm saying? So, that's why I always got to look at it. <laughs> uh, Specs Vision. Yes, Black Sands and Kids to Kings is the same exact thing. Uh, now, let's go and get to the next part of this class. Ten story plots. All right? So, I hope you read Chapter 2 of Save the Cat. Because in Chapter 2, this is the part that um, basically tells you how you're going to write your story, right? Because there's rules. There's rules to every kind of story. And uh, let's go through them, right? So, Monster in the House. All right? There's a reason why it's called Monster in the House. If you have a horror, right, some kind of horror or some kind of survival situation, right, basically there's a house, right? There's an enclosure, something that you can't escape, right? And there's something that will kill you inside of it, right? Some well, your survival will not last if you're inside the house, right? So the objective in all these stories is simply don't die. That's literally the whole purpose of the story. Don't die die it's a it's a fight for survival now people don't think that the martian you remember the movie the martian right people don't see that as a monster in the house story but it is first of all if he takes off his suit outside he dies right if he runs out of food he dies he's he's not stopping a scenario where everything around him could potentially kill him and only his carefulness right <laughs> will allow him to survive and the stakes have to constantly be raised throughout the story for instance he figures everything out everything's going good and then guess what everything falls apart food food supply gets wiped out in one day now he has barely enough food to survive right he has to travel x amount of distance his ship can't fly in the air there's so many extra factors going in there to make it where basically most people would just roll over and die but this guy's not Nobody would see that as a, basically a monster movie, but it is. Jaws is another one. Yeah, the one with Matt Damon. Jaws is another one. It's the exact same storyline as <laughs> as freaking um what's it called? There's a monster. The monster is the wa is the shark. The room is water, all right? You basically can't get out the water. You can't get to land. So you're stuck out there in the water on a boat or whatever and you ca and you can't get out you can't get out of the house the house is the whole entra entrapment of the water and the shark is there just to raise the stakes you understand he's already a bad situation but now the shark's there the water's ships are going down it's too much things going on in the story that's raising the stakes for the characters and their whole objective is to survive all right it's a very carnal carnal um style of writing Something that I hope a couple of you guys are taking on because horror is always good, right? <laughs> Let's see what else. Um, out of the bottle, all right? This requires a wish, right? So something like, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Bruce Almighty. Bruce Almighty is a good example of this, right? Liar, liar. You know, these tend to be comedies, right? Because people wish for things that they think they want and then it never shows up that way right that's that kind of story you know wishes are fulfilled but the wish tends to not be something they truly wanted and instead they go for something else in the end why done it this is mystery stories okay mystery story cast away was a great one too when we're talking about monster in the house cast away is also one of those survival survival stories <laughs> why done it right now, why done it is basically mystery, right? It's it's the why. Why did someone do this, right? That drives the main character crazy, all right? The main character has to figure out why. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to live with themselves or something terrible is going to happen. These stories tend to have a whole bunch of conspiracies in them. 
nothing is very clear you know um everybody's everybody looks like they're suspicious you know it's really cool you know it's just this is a cool atmosphere, but it's also very um, hard to write. So if you're going to do a wide done it story, you need to basically make maps of your entire story with points, right? And then figure out ways to to bring some key moments in without giving away the ending, right? You just got to keep you got to keep adding them in softly, right? Then we have the um, golden fleece. Golden Fleece is basically a journey story, right? This is the story of a whole bunch of people, right? So you have a crew. You have a team, some some kind of team, right? And you're going to get something done in a somewhere else, right? So maybe it's a maybe you're trying to find a treasure or maybe you're trying to uh stop a a a a bad guy from reaching a certain destination on time. But this is a team of people, usually with their own motivations, right, going on a journey together. And you see a lot of change happen between the characters. Everybody has a role to play. This, this, these are some of the stories with the strongest B um, story, like, interactions, you know. Every character has a significant sto um, role to play in the story. Institutionalized is the other side of that coin. Uh, institutionalized is where... We uh, conform to a rebel group or, or is a group that we're basically conforming to. And we don't know whether we're going to accept it or rebel. But basically the story is how we as people, you know, deal with a situation that we're not used to. OK, so this could be a military film. This could be a, a gang film. This could be a space empire film, whatever. Right. These are basically these these are the kind of stories where you see it from the perspective of an insider and you see whether that breaks a person or makes them become one of them, right? And you usually have B characters who are on the polar opposite. So you'll have a B character who hates the institution, wants to destroy it, and then you'll have a B character who um, is brand new and feels like the institution is the best thing that ever happened to him. So you see both sides of the spectrum, right? So you have to make your own personal decision on whether this institution is righteous or something that's evil, right? It's, it's in the eye of the beholder. Next one, buddy love. These are basically love stories, all right? And they don't have to be love interest stories. It could be simply my best friend, right? A story about me and my best friend going through life, right? And, and you know, we have some hardships. We have some good times. And it's just, it's just a buddy story, right? A feel-good story. Uh, these are good, especially for casual audiences, right? Uh, I definitely think that people who are looking to go into romance should definitely study more on buddy stories, like the buddy love, oh, how romantic it could be. But throw some spice in there. You got to throw mad spice in there, right? Because you got to be different from everybody else. So, so make sure to throw some messy stuff in there. Whole bunch of drama. We love it. You know, definitely kick that, that out. Superhero stories. Now, People think that superhero stories are about people who have superpower or something like, hey, I have maximum strength. I'm so strong. You know, that's not really what a superhero story is, though. Basically, a superhero story is I am different. Right. And because I'm different from everyone else, there's a whole bunch of drama. You know, I'm different. So there's a whole bunch of drama. Uh, Laura Croft, Laura Croft is a a great superhero story. She's an amazing archaeologist. She gets shunned by everybody because she always believes in some of the craziest stuff her dad used to do, you know. Um, and because of that, everybody's against her. But she, instead of just conforming, she decides to go and prove everything herself solo. That is a superhero film. Nobody sees it that way, but that's what it is. Powder is a great superhero story. The kid's basically picked on nonstop, but he doesn't turn on people. Instead, he finds ways to go and deal with the situation because he's so special. You know, Forrest Gump is a superhero story, right? Forrest Gump is also a full triumphant story, but Forrest Gump is also a hero story, okay? This guy does everything good, right? But nobody cares because they see him too differently from themselves, 
right? So they don't give him any chance. Even when he does amazing things, they still look at it like it was luck. You understand? So superhero stories, the main thing about a superhero story you need to understand is that the main character has to be different from everybody else, and that's why he can't fit in or she can't fit in. Because they're so different from everyone else. They can't fit in. And how they deal with that scenario. How they deal with other people you know, going against them. That is the, the essence of the superhero genre. Alright. Dude with a problem. Dude with a problem is an ordinary, ordinary guy ends up in an extraordinary situation. So these people can be well equipped to fight this situation. Or ill-equipped to fight this situation. But basically the situation is wildly out of control. And it's up to one person to make it right or make it wrong. The one person has the power to do anything about this. Everyone else has no chance to stop it. It's, it's one person's job to fix it. And they have to fix it because the stakes are so high. Okay, This is the crisis this is like a crisis story. Whenever you have a super crisis going on and there's one character saving everyone's ass, that is do with a problem. <laughs> okay? Because the person is not the person is not a superhero, but they are the best equipped person to try to save the day. You know, they're the best equipped, the best they could possibly do, you know, in the situation. A great a great one that I would tell you to all check out is Daybreak. I think it's Daybreak, and it was Sylvester Stallone. He was just a guy who who uh, deals with like emergency situations, and the Lincoln Tunnel gets gets um, closed in. Water is coming up. Everybody's about to drown or get hypothermia or something like that, and there's no way in hell they're gonna get out of there. So he's got to figure out a way to save all these people <laughs> in this situation. You know, and it's it's a horrible mess, the whole story. <laughs> oh, okay, so somebody wants to see the last couple of words. I'm seeing someone told me to move my image, so I'll move it. Let's see. Uh, boom. All right, so I moved it for you guys. All right. Now, let's see. Um, last one is full triumphant. A clear underdog and an institution holding it back. So this is more of an institution suppressing someone, right, who doesn't fit in. I wouldn't call it a superhero, though. A superhero and a full triumphant tend to be very similar stories. All right. Very similar stories. So uh, I'll just say this. Full Triumphant tends to be a little bit less equipped than a superhero when it comes to the same story, though. Yeah, Armageddon's a great example. Armageddon Armageddon has two things going on for it, right? Armageddon, and, and just let you know, just let you know, this is very important. When you're making your summary, right, and I told you over the last homework, I said pick a genre that's most like your story. Some of you guys were saying, hey, there's like eight different categories that fit my story. There isn't, all right? There's two to three max, all right? There is two to three max that fit your story because they don't overlap that much. You know, there's only two to three. For instance, Armageddon is a great example of, uh, of a dude with a problem, right? The world's about to end. And basically, it's up to these guys to save everyone, even though they don't, they're not astronauts. So this is do with a problem. And it's also um, a Golden Fleece story, right? More so do with a problem, less so Golden Fleece, because they're not choosing to take this, this journey. People are kind of volunteering them to do it. But there's still a motley crew of people with their own freaking personalities, their own agendas. Nobody's really like hardcore institutionalized. It's just a crew of people. And they're all going to do this one specific mission, right? And then get the hell out of Dodge. They ain't trying to stay there all day. <laughs> you know, so it's slightly golden fleece, but mostly dude with a problem. The a, a ordinary person gets put on an extraordinary task. And they have to figure out how to make it work.
All right, so let's move on. So we're going to the beat sheet, all right? The beat sheet in Save the Cat and many other books of, on writing, the theme and the beat sheet is present, all right? It's basically the super summary of your book. has uh, many parts to it. Let me go and pull that down so I'm not blocking anything. Uh, well, has many parts to it. And uh, basically, when you look at films, you're going to see the beat sheet all over the place, all right? Front to back. You'll be able, if you study the beat sheet enough, you'll be able to look at a film and say, oh, I see what they're doing right there. That, that's the setup right there. What? Do you, oh, that's the catalyst. You know what? I knew there was a catalyst in this thing, and it happened right at the time that I thought that it's supposed to happen in a beat sheet. This is crazy. And you can start realizing that <laughs> that over and over again, it's going to come up where you're going to start seeing patterns. The story is going to be told the same way as far as when the beats drop, you know? And uh, it's just a cool and powerful tool. It's definitely something you should know so that in the future, you'll never have writer's block again. All right? No one has writer's block if they know how to make a beat sheet, all right? Because your story is already written out in like five days. You don't have to worry about anything else because you've made a road a road map for your entire story through the beat sheet. You understand? So with that being said, let's talk about the homework, all right? Uh what I am assigning you right now, and the homework is right there at the bottom, right? It said, watch your favorite film, and instead of simply watching it, look for the beats of the film, all right? Print out the homework sheet and fill in the beats for your favorite film. So in other words, watch the film. The second you see something that, that, from Save the Cat this, for the beats, try to catch them all. Catch every single beat and write one sentence that explains what that beat was in your favorite film, all right? If you can recognize that it used in other films, your writing skills will go through the freaking roof because you'll start thinking that way. You'll be like, oh, man, I got to have a reason why he's going on this on this quest, you know? I have I have to have a reason why my character is, is hesitating to go, right? There has to be some kind of hesitation Otherwise, what's the big change in his life? He has to be a reluctant hero. He can't be somebody who's like, I'm going to do it automatically. You know, what's the My Hero Academia? Everybody loves My Hero Academia because of the character development, right? Well, what's the main thing about the main character? He wants to be the greatest hero in the world. But in the first two seasons, he was punking out every five seconds. He was scared. He didn't know what to do. He always was fearful, hesitating. That's important to put in there for the growth of the character, right? The character has to grow. They have to they have to be the reluctant hero. They can't just be the guy who's knocking stuff out instantly. <laughs> hey, do Willy Wonka. Do Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. It's perfect. And then once you're finished, once you're finished with your favorite film, you go and write the beat sheet for your book that you're planning on writing this three months. All right. You make your beat sheet and you have it ready. And if you're a patron, you submit it to me through patron on like Sunday or something like that. So I can review it and I can tell you where you're doing good and where you're not doing so good. All right. This weekend, I'm going to be um, reviewing uh, work for everyone. OK, so first things first, if you are interested in getting any of my books, right? The link for that, right? <laughs> is that. So this one right here, that one that I just put up in the comments, that is for my official store, all right? So if you want to get my books, let me know and I'll definitely hook you up with that. Additionally, um if you're looking to um, have your work critiqued now, now the thing about it is you, a lot of you guys are in my discord channel already. So, you know, I do randomly critique stuff every now and then, right? But I don't do it all the time. So, um, if you want to guarantee that I critique your work, 
get on Patreon, become one of my patrons, right? And uh, I will be critiquing your work. Additionally, um, we will have random conversation in Discord every now and then where everybody can call in, right? This is a feature in, in, in Discord. We can all get on the same call and just have like a group discussion, right? This is going to be some things that we're going to be doing shortly. Um, we're going to start featuring in the future, right? And uh, you guys are going to love that because you're going to be able to uh, you're going to be able to really get hookups, you know, super hardcore hookups on like key things. You can ask questions without having to type them. You can just straight up ask a question, and everybody in the room will be able to hear it as well. And uh, most importantly, you know, it, it builds a sense of community, right? The more we talk, the more we work together, the more likely you are to stick with the program and succeed and get your book out within 90 days, right? If you're all by yourself, you're never going to do it. You're just not. It's, it's so hard for people to self-motivate themselves. You need other people pushing you around. You need all that good stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, if there's any more questions for me, let me know in the comments. Oh, yeah, um, Nandi, so Nandi hasn't seen the video. Yeah, it's going to refresh later on. Oh, yeah, the special announcement. Hey, thank you for telling me about that, Anita. I totally forgot about the special announcement. All right, special announcement. All right, the reason why I'm typing it is because, uh, Typing goes faster than me actually saying on a screen. It's like a about a 30 second delay. But basically, um, for the special announcement is this. At the end of the course, if anybody finishes their publishing, right? If they publish their book within 90 days, right? I'm going to let the audience, which is the people who have taken the class, review the books. And which the top three books, the top three books uh for this class period right this entire 90 days will receive a special package where they will be able to um come to one of our major shows so we do a lot of major shows around the east coast right huge shows c2e2 new york comic con you know anime boston all big giant shows right and uh you can actually come out to one of these big shows right with your book sell your book in our booth but also learn directly from us in action you get to see how you need to present yourself you get to see how you get to um talk to customers interact with them what it takes to basically beat everybody else out when it comes to displays because you're going to be seeing crazy amount of competition and we're going to dominate them and you're going to be like wow this is how i freaking soap myself apart this is basically going to be the moment that you're actually going to be able to see a career for yourself because you're going to see exactly what it takes. It took a lot of experimentation for us to get to that point. And a lot of people don't have the capital to ever, you know, see this kind of competition. You understand? Like uh, New York Comic Con, a booth at New York Comic Con is $3,500. All right. Who's going to put $3,500 to see if they're competing with other people? No way you would do that. Not right now. Not in your current state. However, by attending one of these conventions with us for the weekend, right, you'll be able to uh, learn all the tricks of the trade. You'll be able to sell your own book and promote it at the event, right, and you'll be able to basically hang out with us for a weekend, right? You still have to pay for your travel and your lodging, right? But you won't have to pay for the for the, the badge or access to the con because we're going to pay for that. And uh, you should only go for the ones that are near you. All right. If you're on the West Coast, I guarantee I mean, if you're on the East Coast, I guarantee you we're at a con somewhere near you eventually. All right. Because we go all the way to Florida, Atlanta, 
the mid he said we're going to freaking baltimore we're going to new york we're going to freaking chicago there's so many opportunities to catch us in in person you know and you pick one of those events if you're one of the top three uh um releases from our course so that's pretty hardcore And Edwin Burgos, yes, you can beat sheet an animated film. They're no different from regular films. Oh, so just let you know, the B story is not necessarily addressed in the beat sheet. So this is something you should probably mention in your beat sheet, like when you're bringing out you know the B story it does say it in the beat sheet it does say like when you look at the breakdown in the book of save the cat you'll see an area where it starts talking about where the B story begins so there is a point where the B story begins right but uh it's not necessarily covered in the actual beats I don't care when you publish it, so long as it's published within the 90-day course and it was created because you took the course, right? So, so, so if you took the course and then you release in like 45 days, I don't care. Especially since you're making children's books or comic books, those might not take as long, right? So you might already be ready to go. So I'm not going to penalize somebody for releasing early. So long as we are one of the main reasons why it was released, because you took our class or whatever, then that's all I care about. Well, um, Guts Masterson, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to make a landing page for the course. That way everybody can get all the information regarding what the course is, the incentives at the end of the course, and also um, other things like the Discord channel, you know, the, um, the notifications. By the way, everybody here has us on notifications, right? You, you hit that little bell so you never miss a class, right? Uh, that's very important. <laughs> Um, Gerald Garcia, I really don't know. I, um, this class is not necessarily for short stories, okay? This class is for full-fledged stories, like the entire story from beginning to end. So I don't know if you want to do a series of short stories. That's something that's not necessarily something we're going to be focused on in this class, you know? But I'm not going to stop you from doing it, all right? If you do it and you do it successfully, more power to you. It won't work against you, okay? Uh, Willie Tutson, yes, yes, and Save the Cat, it has like four to five extensive chapters on the beat sheet, the way to craft your story in order to make it sell, and all that good stuff, okay? My class is basically to try to explain, if people already read chapter two, try to make it a little bit more attainable to them, right? Because basically, I'm trying to teach you guys the principles of a book that should take you six months to study, I'm trying to get you to learn it as fast as possible so that you can start crafting your book. Because by week three, there's no more cl there's no more classes on writing books. Did you know that? Did you know that? At week three, there is not a single class on writing books anymore. Week three, you have to write 1,000 words a day on average, so 5,000 a week, for 10 weeks. If we get that done, you'll have a full-fledged novel on your hands in no time. But... 
in week three, we're going to be going over everything there is to know about the business side. And there's no more Save the Cat. It's straight up Manuel Godoy and everything I've learned over the last two years to sell books. All right. That's what you want to do. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you from week three and beyond. It's going to be 100 percent marketing strategy, selling cost of goods. Uh, freaking crowdfunding, all that stuff that's critical to your ability to sustain yourself and to make more books, right? That's the stuff that I'm going to be teaching you during that time, all right? So if, you're bla if your brain's exploding right now, uh, prepare your brain to um, take more explosions in the coming weeks because it'll only get tougher from here, all okay? right? This is a brutal course. That's why the incentives are so high. And trust me, like, I, I, I like the response that we've been getting, the amount of uh, commitment people are showing. So I'm going to keep this going, and we're going to do this entire three months together as soldiers, and we're going to handle it, okay? And cool tools, random videos? Um, yes. You will be selling your book if you are selected as the top three students. You will be able to sell your books at the convention. All right, guys, so that's it. The class is up. I'm ready to go. Um, I hope you guys had a great time. Uh, remember, if you want to get any of the books from us, just visit BlackSandsEntertainment.com. If you want me to critique your work, sign up for Patreon at Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash BlackSands. And always engage and work together on Patreon. That is your private forum to work on your books and share your thoughts with others to improve you know because a lot of students and we hopefully uh, at least one third of you will release your book by the end of this class and that will be an exceptional exceptional accomplishment Yeah.